Greetings, nerds of the internet. Welcome to Insert Coin to Begin Presents Let's Play. In case you're unfamiliar with the show, the way it works is we answer a few questions based on a time limit each week. Each week, different questions. Each week, we try to have different guests. This week, joining us are contributors Bobby and Fuzzy from InsertCoinToBegin.com. Good evening, fellows. Good evening, Howdy. Chachi. How's it going? So, you can find Bobby at BobbyFJTown on Twitter, and Fuzzy is at FuzzWad on Twitter. Talk to us. We'll talk back. We have a Twitter. It's at InsertCoinTB. And you can also find us on Facebook, Google+, iTunes. Uh, we're on the Twitter, like I said. This week's hashtag is hashtag LP. Nine, if you want to make comments. So, the way this works is we answer three minor questions, time limit at five minutes apiece, and then follow up with a boss fight that gets all the time left. As we start with each and every week on the show, the first question is, what are you playing, and did you play the ch challenge? Bobby. I did not play the challenge this week. Uh, I did. I've not had time to play many games, but um, what I have played, I played uh, Mass Effect Three, uh, Civilization Five on Steam, which I'm surprised my computer can handle it, and uh, Marvel Avengers Alliance on Facebook, which I finally, finally bought Spider Man this week, and it made my day. <laughs> All right, Fuzzy. Um, I really didn't get a chance to play too much. Um, I played Tropico when I was at home and Major Mayhem when I was, uh, when I wasn't home and I did not get a chance to play the challenge, but I'm definitely going to try to do that this week because it has, um, the big thing about that challenge from last week with Sim Raceway, it has Ayrton Senna's McLaren that he drove, which anyone who understands cars understands racing you know how huge that is that you can drive Ayrton Senna's car. So even if you didn't get a chance to check it out this past week, check it out in the future because it's Ayrton Senna. Okay, here here's my problem. Okay, I, I did. Well, let me change that. I attempted to play the challenge. The problem is if your computer isn't a top of the line machine, mm -hmm. this is going to be terrible. Oh really? I was like oh. my my computer isn't that bad, and I still had problems running this freaking game. Did you notice that like it really seems like their big thing is to push the controller? Yes. Yeah, I did notice that. This thing looks insane. Well, uh, well the the controller that Sorg is talking about is this pro controller that has eight hundred buttons. But wow. here's the thing, though. And that's if an you've exaggeration. ever looked at a Formula One car, that's what your steering wheel is. That is like a replica steering wheel from a Formula One car. With all so, of the buttons? Wouldn't 800 yes. buttons be a keyboard? <sighs> yeah, you essentially have a keyboard <laughs> as your steering wheel in these cars. Uh, they cost upwards between fifty and $70,000 for the steering wheel alone in a modern F1 car. That's what your steering wheel looks like in an F1 car. So the fact that they're bringing something with that amount of realism is fantastic. I think that that controller, albeit how ridiculous it looks, is excellent. Okay. And unfortunately, that, and unfortunately, now that you say that you need a top-of-the-line computer to play that game, I kind of want to get one just because I want to be able to use that controller because <laughs> that is the only controller of its kind on the market. I have not seen anyone else with a Formula One-style controller like that. If someone has seen one, please send us a line, insert coin to begin at gmail.com, because I want it, but yeah, like that is a fantastic controller. And as you may say, it's ridiculous. Look up any F1 car; that's what you see. Oh, it, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry, but of course you, you know me. I'm not much of a, a, a race uh, game playing person, unless it's like Need for Speed or something like that. Um, I back to the the question at hand. I had a I had a Batman week this week. Uh, as far as games that I, I played, I uh, I got my hands on uh, Arkham Asylum. 
uh, which is just amazing. It is amazing. Arkham Asylum or Arkham City? Arkham Asylum. I put the wrong Arkham name. Arkham Asylum. Yeah. I put the wrong name in the notes. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I played Lego Batman. I played uh, Dark Knight Rises for my Android. And as I have been for the past few weeks, I have been demolishing people in uh, Fight Night Round 4. How's the uh, mobile game for Dark Knight Rises? I It's, um, have you seen the movie? Yeah. It follows that pretty much. Oh, good. Is it worth the $7? I haven't had a problem with it. Cool. I mean, it's, I it's, it's entertaining it me every time I, I turn it on. Um, it and as far as the challenge for this week, we will get to that here in a little bit. Because it, it is a two-part challenge. Because I like to complicate things. Yes, but it, it's fine. I don't have a problem with that. All right. The next question, also five minutes. Uh, everyone has preferences when it comes to uh, their particular gaming setups. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the most important part of a gaming setup? Fuzzy. Okay. Uh, for me, this one was hard because I have um, my setup, uh, among other little tidbits hooked up to these things, the two anchors in my system are a 50-inch plasma screen, uh, 1080p, and a 1,000-watt 5.1 surround sound. And it was hard thinking about which one is more important, to have the big visuals or to have the surround sound. And the thing is, with the surround sound, Whenever you play Forza, because this is the first thing I did. As soon as I hooked it up, I put in Forza 3. I got the Ferrari F430, and I just cranked up the surround sound. Best headache of my life. <laughs> but just having that around you, just the noise of the engine, to have the subwoofer just pounding out the base of the engine, to have all the high-range speakers, it's like you're in the car. It's just immersive. And that's the whole thing. It immerses you into the game. And that gets to the flip side of it. When I started playing Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, uh, whenever you have the level that has the dog come after you, it's uh, fairly in the beginning of Modern Warfare 2. Uh, that's freaky as hell whenever you're on a surround sound because the game is built to be able to run on a surround sound. So you hear the dog coming from over mm -hmm. here. You hear a dog coming at you, and then you just hear gun gunfire all around you and you have from your center channel coming all your commands from uh whoever it is who's also with you on the mission it's immersive and that i think is the best thing for like that's the most important thing for me for the setup is to have that audio that just immerses you into the action that puts you right there in the game okay bobby uh, my big thing would be a high-definition television. Um, when I first got my Xbox, I didn't have an HD TV. Uh, I played Mass Effect 2, and the font was very, very, very tiny. Like, unreadably tiny. Same with uh, uh, Dead Rising. I got my high-def TV. I can read everything. It's, it's picture so much clearer and... Another thing would be my surround headset for Call of Duty, because I can tell when people are coming up behind me, and, you know, good stuff. Alright. Um, I went a different route. Well, I mean, I, I, I went pretty much the same route that you guys did uh, overall. However, I have some disagreements with you guys. Um, I don't... I don't think the high def makes any difference. I do. Um... It, it's not an essential part of a, a a gaming system. For games with small text, it is. Yeah. Just throwing, just throwing that out there for Tropico 3 because you can't read their instructions if you don't have high def. Exactly. And not really. I, I can read the instructions fine on my 26-inch flat screen. You get a flat screen. Well, I, I don't... I, <laughs> I don't and have anyways, the... Anyways, uh, let him get to the point. I don't have the, uh, the HD hooked up to it, though. Not true. Um, okay. I, I think the most important part of my gaming setup would be the Turtle Beach headset. That's what I my surround headset's Turtle um, Beach. 
because I, that fills uh, two parts. One, it gives you the, the high-impact uh, surround sound that is essential for games like Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. And it has your microphone uh, built in for uh, gaming with friends. Um, the advantage of, of the headset, though, is it doesn't matter what hour of the day it is. They, if you want to blast the uh, the sound so that you get fully immersed in the game, <laughs> you can do that. That that is a bit of a limitation with me having a thousand watts around sound and living in a townhouse community. Exactly, that's an issue. <laughs> I have a funny story about the first time I used my headset for Skyrim. I did the uh, shout where you shout up to the heavens and call the storm, and I jumped. The first time I had it on, I was like, because my guy just went, Rah! and it was like, oh, it was, it was, it was amazing. Oh, I, and it started raining, and I was like, that actually felt like it was raining. I lost, uh, I lost track of time and my my surroundings the first time I played Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Three with my Turtle Beach headset. <laughs> it, 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 you can it, crank that. Plants and, started to grow around you. Yeah, you you <laughs> have no idea what's going on around you if you have that thing up high enough. So, I disagree with all of you. It's the headset. And since I'm the boss, that makes me right. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Bobby, I believe. Yep. Oh, no, don't do that. Uh, do you think Nintendo is going the way of Sega within the next five years? And by that, he means uh, becoming a software-only company. Go ahead, Fuzz. Um... To continue to make hardware because the Wii, when it came out, was a big hit. I don't know that the Wii U is going to have that kind of initial success that the Wii had, but you know, as much as you hear people say that you know it, there's that it's limited on the Wii, you you all remember that it was the hardest to get system that Christmas when all three systems came out. You could not find a Wii. And they're going to continue coming out with things like that that are just kind of. I don't, I don't know so much as cutting edge, but just different. And they're, they're still going to have success with that. But I do see them reaching a point where they start to struggle with coming out with the content for it. And I do see them releasing Zelda and Mario and uh, Donkey Kong and all those other different big Nintendo franchises. I see them branching out to the Xbox, the PlayStation, the Ouya, just because that's what they'll need to do. So I don't think that Nintendo is going to become software only, but I think they are going to branch their software out to different people. Okay. Bobby? Uh, I think a lot of their future hinges on the Wii U, and I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it, I don't think it's going to work for them. How many, how many of you have Wiis? How many of you uh, could go to their Wii right now and take a cloth and just wipe the film and dust off of it from its non-use? Because I don't really know anybody that's playing the Wii right now. Hold up. Have you, have I, you played I'm, Wii? I'm going to have to stop you there for two reasons. One, I have a Wii. Okay. Two, if you let dust build up on any of your systems, I ought to smack the crap out of you. <laughs> and then I will follow up with that. Actually, actually my, my sister is, is, is using it to watch Netflix on. So, But yes, I play the Wii still. I have not played Wii since I don't know how long. I bought I bought Skyward Sword. I didn't get the chance to play it. I kind of want to play Skyward Sword, just haven't got to it because I'm, in, I'm playing Xbox and PlayStation Three. And I just I just think that Nintendo is uh, is gonna fail with this new system, and I think they're gonna start pumping their stuff out for Xbox and and uh, PlayStation, and e maybe even iPhone, iPhone games. Stuff like that. I just don't think they're going to make it. I disagree. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think they're going to branch out at all. Um, because it's Nintendo. Uh, we discussed this a few weeks of... Uh, a few weeks ago on... Or not a few weeks ago. Uh, shortly after E3 on AwesomeCast. 
and there is a huge market of people that will continue to buy Nintendo-based products based on the fact that it is a, a family system. Uh, everyone will play it um, from grandparents to little kids. Uh, the, the Wii, uh, they may have posted uh, losses in the last two quarters, but you're doing when you're when you're spending marketing money on a system that isn't out yet, that's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the Wii U is just gonna make up for all that that they lost, and everything's gonna continue to go the way that the the way that Nintendo has been going since back in the eighties when they first came out. Um. It, it won't be five years. It won't be ten years. You would be lucky if it would be 15 or 20 years uh, before you see Mario or Zelda or Donkey Kong on a system that doesn't have the Nintendo name on it. And a good point with this from Zero2K in the chat room is Game Boy will stay the top system for handhelds. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's nothing. Yeah, I do not see anything from Sony topping that. And even if Microsoft ventured out with an Xbox handheld, no, it's not going to be able to compete with the Game Boy. All right. Uh, before we do the boss fight, um, this is the part where we are going to talk about the challenges for this week. Uh, uh, Fuzzy had a great idea to. Branch out. Uh, not only have us answer these questions and give our opinions, but also uh, have you, people at a later date listening to this or watching this on the medium of your choice, uh, chime in on one of the questions. Um, the questions that we're going to, the question that we're opening up to this week is the. Uh, what do you think the most important part of a gaming setup is? Um, we, we want your opinion. We want to know what your, your current preference is or what your dream preference would be as far as uh, the most important part. Uh, and you can, we're going to do this two ways. You can either uh, respond to us on Twitter at insertcointb with the hashtag LP9. Or you can send us an email to insertcoin to begin at gmail.com and let us know what you think the most important part of the cons- uh, of the gaming setup is. And we'll, we'll discuss it again next week because that's what we do. I said Gmail. Open your ears. <laughs> uh, this week's boss fight. You guys ready? Hey, what about the other part of the challenge? Oh, right. The other part of the challenge. Uh, this week's gaming challenge is going to be the Family Guy MMO. Uh, this is a free-to-play in-browser game, which means it's not taxing on your system, and it is easy to sign up with to and easy to play, and you can get that at familyguyonline.com slash game. So sign up uh, at Explore Quahog and uh, let us know what you think about this expansion of the Family Guy universe. So that will be this week's challenge. Part two. All right, boss fight. Yes? All right, this week's boss fight. uh, It comes because uh, everyone has uh, has been complaining that it's been so long since we had a new system. A new generation of systems. Um, which uh, led to a post that I did today. Uh, it was called, um, Do We Really Need a New Generation of Systems? Because I don't think we do. However, one of the biggest arguments in the gaming world, by far, hands down, is what gaming is better, PC or console? You can go to any gaming site on the internet and go to any comment section and I guarantee you you will find at least one person trying to start this argument 
because they want to be a troll and call someone a noob. <laughs> so, I present to you guys, console versus PC gaming is one truly better than the other. Fuzzy. Um... I don't know. This one's hard because it can go. It could really go either way. Personally, I think the console is better because um, I did have I did try to get into computer gaming uh, a few years ago, and it just ended up there were just some issues with getting the right video card uh, mm -hmm. to play. I can't even remember what game it was. It was like some battlefield game or something like that, but it. It was just a pain, and it ended up not working out. The reason why I kind of think the console gaming is better is because you buy an Xbox disc, you stick it in your Xbox, you don't need to worry about you know, if, if all of your hardware in there is going to be up to spec for what you need. You aren't going to have some of the issues that Julie was saying that she was having with Diablo 3, where her video card was supported in the demo but not in the full version at first. You aren't going to have those kind of issues where you don't have the right parts to run the game. It's just already all there, so you don't need to worry about it. Also, for those that like to tinker, that you really there's you aren't going to be able to necessarily screw something up by saying, "Well, you know, I wonder if I could, you know, just squeeze another video card in there or like, you know, add this much extra." Which, in some ways, it you could immensely increase the performance, but there's also the chance that you might just screw something up. There's a chance that your uh, your liquid coolant might, you know, just burst and then go spraying all throughout your system. There's just... It, I think that there's just a lot more variables with uh, PC gaming, and the, I think that just staying with the console kind of makes it a little bit safer, in my opinion. But that's just me. Okay. Bobby? Uh, I would have to agree with uh, Fuzzy there. Uh, console gaming, I think, is e a lot easier. It's a lot more user friendly. I've had computer systems where I bought I bought Oblivion when it ca first came out. Had to buy a new video card because it wasn't compatible. Then when I tried to install it, it wouldn't install properly. So I had to figure that out, and it, it took me how long to to play it. When I finally got around to play it, I was like, "Heck with this! I'm just gonna buy it for Xbox 360 when it comes out." And I bought Oblivion on Xbox, no problems at all. Um, the only the only upside I see to con to PC gaming compared to, to console gaming, if you have a high end system and, and the amazing graphics that computer systems have nowadays, like if you have a high end uh, gaming PC, something like that. And another thing would be the mods, because people are doing amazing things with mods in Skyrim and and just other other things where they're just um, civilization Revel or uh, Civil Civilization Five. People were like making their own custom maps and everything like that. A lot of really cool things going on, but I just I just can't take PC gaming, <laughs> especially with the computer I have. But console console for me is, is the way to go. You're both wrong. <laughs> um, and I, I do have. I what's that fuzzy? Of course we are. Um, mm -hmm. There's no, no. There's there's no correct answer here. Uh, despite the fact that you have fanboys in everything that is multi-sided in the world, you cannot say that one is better than the other in this case. Um, have you guys played The Sims? Of course you played The Sims. Mm -hmm. Have you ever no. tried to play The Sims on a console? Yeah, that's bad. It is the worst experience that you could possibly have in yeah. gaming. StarCraft 64. StarCraft? <laughs> 64. Exactly. As an N64. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another one of the bad experiences that you could possibly have. I think they had Warcraft 2 on the PlayStation. They did. They did have Warcraft 2 on the PlayStation. Roller, co um, roller Coaster Tycoon uh, 3D. Boulders, Boulders the Gate. <laughs> SimCity on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Boulder, <laughs> Boulders Gate for the uh, the Xbox. Um, and as far as updating the computer, if you are that hardcore into um, 
uh, PC gaming, then chances are you are able to uh, keep the, the machine updated. If you are hardcore... If you're hardcore into console gaming, then that's all you're going to really worry about. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I love World of Warcraft. And you could never play that on a console. So, I mean, like like Zero2K in the chat room says, this is a, a, a game-dependent uh, question. Uh, there is no... Uh, correct answer to the way this is going to go. And so I mean, all the all these fanboys on the the comment section. Uh, it, the reason I brought this up is because a few weeks ago, when I did the open letter to uh, Polytron, when I was extremely upset at the way that the 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 whiner that developed the game handled the. No, Xbox wants to charge me ten thousand dollars to fix a patch. The fed situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, the biggest argument in the the comments wasn't whether or not the guy was wrong for not wanting to fix a patch for his game that was broken to begin with, but it was uh, PC gaming is better than Xbox gaming, or. PC gaming is better than console gaming. And then you'd have five comments of people telling the guy that he's a noob and uh, insulting his sexual orientation because uh, they're console gamers. So I, I that's, that's the way I see it. Also, the PS3 is almost like having a PC because you have to install everything. And every time you go to play a game, it's install this, you know, new patch available. Well, you have that. It's, it's the same on the Xbox. There's a lot of games where as soon as you put them in, they say there's there's a patch available, even but for demos. You get for patches some, coming. For some reason, it it's it just drives me nuts on PlayStation Three. I don't know why. It's like every everything I go to play, even yeah, you just have to install it, and it's just oh, it drives me nuts. So I I mean, it it is funny. Okay, it is funny that the, the how that experience is kind of crossing over. With the consoles mm -hmm. being installable and patched and everything like that, so you're running into a lot of the same problems yeah. in the long run. I mean, it's a little easier because it is one version of the console for the most part. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. To me, PC gaming is kind of like my chance to catch all the stuff I didn't on Xbox. Partially thank the Steam, and I'm mm -hmm. usually buying older games, so it runs on whatever I'm running. So, but yeah, I can't. I'm not buying Crisis. You know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, it's anything that I want to play, it, it's most likely going to be on the console. Um, luckily for me, I've gotten over my whole uh, WoW addiction. Um, that took a lot of counseling and a lot of, a lot <laughs> of um, nights sitting in the bathtub running cold water to stop me from going to play. You know, a, a, a thought just occurred to me. Uh, is your PC gaming, like you talked about the interface. Yeah. Is your PC gaming getting replaced by things like the iPad? Because look at some of the games that are on there, like um, like your adventure games, like your Sam and Max's and your Back to the Future games that have been out. Uh, so like that kind of point and click uh, is there. And also um, I, there's a Command and Conquer on there, which runs pretty decent. And again, you know, your mouse is replaced. Uh, you think that kind of at least takes care of that part of the genre? No. No? Um, and the reason... I have reasons to back it up. Uh, but uh, while it adds another aspect to the point-and-click type PC gaming, it's not the same. Okay. Uh, if anything, it's an additive to PC gaming, uh, but it won't overcome PC gaming it, in it, any before, capacity. You're not going to see like a Diablo 3 on there. Right, and the reason for that, the main reason... Uh, certain games like that would fail on uh, iPad or mobile devices or console gaming is because uh, whether you want to believe it or not, there's more than just pointing and clicking to these games. I mean, companies sell keyboards uh, it, with custom button names on them <laughs> because there's so much other commands in the game. Mm 
like an overlay for your Baldur's Gate game or something. Yeah, I mean, you can. I, if there's packages where you can buy a specific. Well, and I, I'm sure it's updated since all the updates they've had since I played. But I, you could go out and spend fifty dollars on a WoW keyboard that folded up so you could put it away when you're not playing WoW. <laughs> I, I never got to buy one because, like I said, I, I got, I got help. I there was got, a. There was actually an Onion article this week where it said now the now uh, in, ex- in the new expansion of Warcraft you can play as a person playing Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. I would play that game. <laughs> I mean, no, I won't. I I don't need it. I I've kicked that that particular habit. Just like I haven't been contemplating buying, uh, re-signing up for uh, Warcraft so I can play as a panda. Yeah. Mrs. Pandora or whatever it is. Those bouncy, bouncy pandas that look so cute (laughs) and adorable and fun to bounce around. But you've never seen that before? No. Uh, Oh, the the latest uh, upgrade for World of Warcraft is called Mr. Pandaria, and um, the new race is pandas. So, yeah. Uh, They get uh, 50% bonuses for falling because they, they they're bouncy <laughs> it's gummy gummy bears the MMORPG. I, I, i'm not kidding they also get bonuses for eating it's gummy bears the mmorpg exactly um, here and there and everywhere, everywhere. Uh, as are always they the, are the panda bears <laughs> the discussions were amazing this week as always um Thank you, nerds, for joining in, especially the people in the chat room playing around, and the people that will listen at a later date and time. As I stated at the beginning, this is Insert Coin to Begin Presents Let's Play. You can find us on iTunes, we're on the Google Pluses, the Facebooks, the Twitters at Insert Coin TV. You can individually tweet us. I'm at Chachi Says, at Fuzzwad, at Bobby FJ Town. Hashtag it, L. Uh, hashtag LP9 if you have specific comments about this episode or if you just want to BS about video games in general so thank you for joining us remember this week's challenge to let us know what your essential part of the gaming setup is and to make sure you play Family Guy Online the MMO also can I add something else Quickly. The uh, Transformers War for Cybertron uh, demo comes out today on Xbox 360. All right. So pick that up. So there you go. So for Bobby, for Fuzzy, we are part of InsertCoinToBegin.com where we post daily news stories about the stuff you care about, obviously video games, because we care as well. So until next week, keep it nerdy. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. It's not a bra. It's a mustache, asshole.